Hello, this podcast is for CNT 140. We're going to be looking at our Chapter 5 on wire and cable technologies for LANs. This is going to be a series of podcasts that we cover all the media, but we'll uh, start in on coax and we'll work our way through. So let's take a look. The, the main goals of this chapter is to introduce you to the different types of media that you encounter in networking. Um, and give you kind of a little bit of exposure to each one and a little bit more details on um, how they function, how they work. So let's kind of dive right in. First thing they mentioned at the beginning of the chapter is the uh, basic cable types that you find in LANs. And they're reminding you these are specified in your ANSI TIA 568 standard. And if we take a look at the standard, I'm going to pull it up real quick. If we plow into our standard here, the 568 standard, if we go into the C0 part of the standard, around, around about page 7, it'll tell us that the recognized cabling that we would have in networks are 100 ohm balanced twisted pair cabling, what, what we would consider as, you know, unshielded twisted pair or Cat5 cabling kind of thing, multi-mode fiber, single-mode fiber. Those are the three acceptable um, three accepted types of cabling that we can use in networks or LANs. So I, I know the book mentioned a little bit differently, but I kind of rearranged it to, to agree with our standard. These are the three basic types that we would encounter for LANs. 100 ohm ba balanced twisted pair, just pair cabling, multi-mode fiber, single mode fiber. So we're definitely going to touch on those and spend some time on those. Uh, we do want to take just a few minutes on coax and non-paired or phone wire, if you will, just to touch on them, just to make sure we recognize them or recognize some differences on them. So actually, in this first, po first podcast, I'm going to take a look at the coax with you, just for familiarity's sake. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, I, I'm, I'm grouping this under the other category because you do kind of run into this. Once upon a time, this was in the IEEE 8023 standard for Ethernet. Um, it was originally recognized by EIATA 568, uh, but as the 568 standard had evolved, it actually got dropped. Um, it's no longer a recommended type of cable. It's no longer accepted for new installations. Um, but, but, you know, we don't see them in lands, but we still see it as ISP connections for your house or business. So I at least want you to recognize some uh, tidbits about coax. So if we take a look, general construction, you have a center connector on here, um, and around that is a insulating material, and then around that is a shield. Um, so the, the center conductor, the center copper wire, if you will, is the part that's carrying the data, and the shield around it is there, just as the name is implying, to shield from EMI RFI. Um, and, and that is the basic construction of all coax cable uh, be it some differences in sizes and so forth. Typically non-plenum is usually black rubber out jacket. Plenum is usually white jacket, if you will. Um, exception to that rule was thick net. And again, um, when we start dealing with cabling on the outside of the cable jacket, you will see labels from manufacturer, um, size, gauge, those kinds of things on the outside of the uh, cable jacket. And we want to start paying attention to know what, what type of cable we're dealing with. Um, there is two types of shielding in this. You often have the foil shield and the braided shield. So if we start taking a look, here's a picture showing you um, basic construction of coax. Here's the center conducting core, copper wire, if you will. There's insulation here, okay, PVC Teflon, if you will. And then around that is your shielding, either a braided, um, braided shielding or a foil shielding. And over here you kind of see some ideas of that, the braided shielding and the foil shielding, and then the outer insulation around that. That is typical for almost any type of coax that you would encounter. Um, to, to designate the differences, they are um, designated with an RG specification number, and that is telling you the difference between the shielding and the, um, you know, uh, the size of the cable conductor, those kinds of things. The conducting core, measured by American wire gauge. We'll get to some details in that a little bit later. Um, so here's roughly the four that you would would have encountered or do encountered over the years in networking. Uh, if we start way back in the beginning, RG8, this was your 10 base 5 Ethernet, your thick net, early, early, early Ethernet, original Ethernet, if you will. This was the original coax bus um, cable that was used, RG8. We'll show you an example of that in a second. RG58 came along after that. This was your thin net coax using the BNC uh, T connectors. So this was um, the original Ethernet was 10 base 5 thick net. And then 
as it progressed using thinner coax, it, uh, we start calling it 10 base 2 using an RG58 coax. Again, I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Actually, I should also pop right to that here. Here's your 10 base 5 thick net, this guy right here, and then the 10 base 2 thin net here. So this was the original Ethernet. This was kind of the updated Ethernet when we were still using the coax bus. Uh, we move closer to today, cable television RG59 uh, with an F-type connector. This was used for cable TV for a long time, but most modern cable TV, satellite kind of connections that you have to your house are going to be RG6. This had uh, uh, better signal carrying capability, less signal loss uh, than RG59. So most modern coax connections coming to your house are going to be RG6 uh, with an F-type -F connector. Uh, so again, there's your, your thick net 10 base 5 and thin net 10 base 2. And just a quick comparison of thin, uh, thick net, thin net, and what we're used to 10 base T. Now, reminding you of thinking way back in time, original coax uh, bus Ethernet, we were using the, um, here's your thick net coax here, and we're using these transceivers bolted around the coax cable attached to the PC. So here is actually one of those transceivers bolted around the thick net cable, the 10 base 5 cable, coax cable, uh, tapping into the network and then a serial cable if you will connected from the transceiver into your PC NIC. Um, just trying to remind you that that was the original uh, Ethernet, the original coax bus 10 base 5. Then as things progressed, they started using the thin net coax and the BNCT connector. So a lot thinner coax connection onto a BNCT connector connected right to my NIC. A lot more simple connections. Um, this was the progression of coax Ethernet buses. If we take a look at our different types of connectors, again up here, here's the AUI. Uh, you can almost think of that as an old serial connection kind of thing. Um, the AUI with the uh, 10 base 5 Ethernet uh, RG8 coax cable. And then things moved on to the thin net 10 base 2 using RG58 coax BNC connectors. This was the upgrade to um, coax buses using the thinner coax. And then as we move to today, this is... Um, what we would see F-type connector for the RG59 or RG6. This looks very similar to what you would have for your uh, cable television, um, your high-speed internet connection coming to your house, that kind of thing. This is probably what you have for your uh, connection. Pros and cons, if we think back about coax, it is highly resistant to EMI because of the shielding. It is highly resistant to physical damage. It's a pretty robust cable, um, and it does have greater distance, distance capabilities than twisted pair. One of the reasons it's still a connection from, you know, your ISP to your house, if you will. Disadvantages is it's not cheap. Um, it's not as flexible as some other media to deal with. Um, and as far as networks are concerned, this is really not supported by networking standards to use inside my building um, to connect my closets together, my networking closets together, if you will. You know, from my ISP to my house, okay, but inside my building, it's not acceptable media to use. So there real quickly is our coax. We'll, um, actually, I think we have a minute or two here. We'll touch on our phone cabling uh, before we move on to a new podcast. So I'm going to continue on and talk about non-paired or phone cable real quickly. Just kind of reminding you, um, our, our non-paired phone cable, typically a flat two or four wire cable, terminating an RJ11 jack. This is your phone connection here, as opposed to what we're used to, the eight wire RJ45 twisted pair, you know, category 5E cable it would use for network. Just showing you the difference in size and the number of wires, just to trying to get you oriented. Uh, and here's another picture of non-paired flat cable, phone cable, uh, just ordinary four wires. They're not twisted color code, but not twisted together or anything like that. And then terminating the RJ11. Um, Typical phone cables, two pair, four pair, six pair, and then they did move up in the 25, 25 pair and 100 pair for connecting together 66 blocks for phone networks. Um, so the book talked a little bit about these because, again, when we in early, early data days, when we went from coax to uh, a paired cable, uh, we started using phone cable because it was adequate for data speeds then. It's not adequate for data speeds 
data speeds today. But they were mentioning these because your 25 pair and 50 pair wires were terminated into these 66 blocks that were used for phone connections. Uh, and roughly speaking, you would have a 25 pair uh, wire coming and punched in on this side and you would have another one on this side to line up phone numbers. So you know the the from the PBX you would punch in on this side all the phone numbers 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004 and then on this side I'd use another jumper to go from that phone number out to this phone I wanted it to go to. So I was using this 66 block as a termination point uh, and then they even had connectorized uh, uh, 66 blocks as well for this. Again, adequate for low data speeds by today's standards, not adequate. Uh, there's too much wire and twist for all that um, for modern uh, network speeds, modern, modern data speeds. But they showed it to you because that's kind of where the data cabling, when we went from coax to twisted pair, this was kind of the stepping stone to get us there. All right, so that's kind of our first podcast in this chapter talking about those two just kind of the other media when we come back let me zoom up here real quick when we come back we're going to start digging into um, our other types of media the twisted pair and then eventually fiber